There are more than 40,000 airports in the world. The majority of them are quite standard, but some manage to surprise passengers with their engineering and design solutions. Today, we will tell you about the 10 most unusual airports in the world that will leave no one indifferent. Enjoy watching. Princess Juliana International Airport ranks among the top 10 most dangerous airports in the world, and for good reason. Located in the Caribbean basin on a small island divided between France and the Netherlands, the airport boasts a runway that practically begins on the beach. The runway is so close to the shore that planes have to fly directly over the heads of tourists, sometimes to their amazement and sometimes to their horror. For pilots, landing and taking off at Juliana Airport is undoubtedly a test of professional aptitude. The end of the runway is located right by the seaside, closely adjacent to Maho Beach, which means that aircraft coming in for landing pass at heights of 10 to 20 meters over the heads of tourists relaxing on the beach. Being on the island, you experience genuine shock. When a multi-ton machine passes overhead, your breath naturally catches. Interestingly, even the flight schedule is displayed on a surfing board at the beach. You can be prepared in advance for the airplane encounter. Just 46 kilometers southwest of the shores of St. Martin lies the International Wancho E. Rouskin Airport with the shortest runway in the world, only 400 meters long, making it just slightly longer than a typical aircraft carrier. Many experts consider this runway to be the most dangerous in the world. Only small planes or helicopters can land here. The only airline that operates regular flights to the island is Winair. There are only two ways to reach the island, a short 12-minute flight from St. Martin or a 90-minute boat ride. Despite the fact that there has not been a single fatal accident here, not every pilot, even a professional one, dares to make the flight to this airport. In Gibraltar, this small yet strategically important British overseas territory, an airport is situated whose runway crosses the main road of the local town. Every time an airplane takes off or lands, the transportation artery has to be closed. During takeoff or landing, a pair of small barriers stop vehicular traffic. However, this is not a very busy airport. Typically, there are about 30 to 50 flights per week, all exclusively to or from the United Kingdom. Currently on some days, Gibraltar Airport accommodates around seven airplanes. Usually the average duration of road closure is 10 minutes. Gibraltar Airport is the only one in the world where the road crosses the runway. Despite the airport being owned by the British Ministry of Defense, there are occasional civilian flights in addition to military ones. The Madeira International Airport is one of the largest in Portugal after Lisbon, Porto, and Faro. It is located 17 kilometers from Funchal. This airport is considered one of the most dangerous in the world due to the island's unusual terrain. Surrounded by mountains on all sides, it is extremely difficult to make a landing here. Pilots must descend almost blindly and only at the very last moment align the aircraft with the runway. In 2000, a new runway in the form of an elevated platform was built at the airport, significantly easing the task for pilots. A structure consisting of 180 reinforced concrete pillars, each with a diameter of 5 meters, was erected, forming the foundation of the runway. Sometimes these supports rise 50 meters above sea level. However, this design is not a result of creative engineering, but a practical necessity due to the surrounding landscape. Despite being considered one of the most dangerous airports in the world, there have been only two accidents in its history, both occurring in 1977. A place well known to James Bond movie fans. In Tomorrow Never Dies, Bond successfully landed a plane here. Courchevel Airport has one of the shortest runways in the world, 525 meters with an 18% slope. Currently only helicopters and light aircraft land here, but in the past larger aircraft such as Twin Otters and Dash 7s used the runway. After several accidents, mandatory pilot certification was introduced. Only highly experienced pilots can manage a landing here. Considering that the airport is situated in the French Alps, it also offers picturesque views. In the History Channel's Most Extreme Airports program, Courchevel's airfield holds the seventh position. The uniqueness of this airport lies in the fact that all three of its runways are nothing but sandy beaches. Located at the northern tip of the Scottish island of Barra, it ranks among the top 10 most dangerous airports in the world. During high tides, its functionality ceases until the water once again exposes the runways. The only demarcation for the length of the runways is a wooden fence. At Nightbarra Airport is also closed for aircraft operations. 
Only emergency takeoffs and landings are permitted during dark hours, conducted with the aid of vehicle headlights and reflective strips laid along the runway. Apart from the sandy runways, it features a conventional passenger terminal, a control tower, baggage handling services, navigation systems, and emergency facilities. Barra Airport handles around 1,500 flights per year, accommodating both scheduled and chartered aircraft. The annual number of passengers passing through Barra Airport amounts to about 10,000 people. No asphalt, no concrete, not even sand, just ice and snow stretching for many kilometers around. The ice runway is essentially not an airport, but one of the most renowned runways located in the Antarctic region. The challenge for landing here isn't just the ice, but the harsh weather conditions as well. At the beginning of each season, the runway is cleared of snow for planes that transport specialized cargo and passengers to the nearby largest settlement in Antarctica, McMurdo Station. Despite the very real risk of aircraft sinking into the ice, even large planes like the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy have landed here. Pilots must possess strong nerves and extensive experience in overcoming challenges. Ice has much lower strength compared to materials like asphalt. The landing gear of large cargo planes compress the ice by several centimeters upon landing. The control over loading an aircraft bound for Antarctica is meticulous. Everything is carefully inspected before departure. The total weight of the plane must not exceed 200 tons. By early December, when the ice begins to break up, the runway ceases operation. The media labels Daqing Yading Airport the highest in the world, and not without reason. Opened in 2013, this Tibetan airport is situated at a record altitude of 4,411 meters above sea level. Notably, the airport terminal resembles a flying saucer. The annual traffic at this air hub is designed for 280,000 people, with the majority being tourists and pilgrims. Both groups head towards the Yiding Nature Reserve, one to admire the beauty of mountain landscapes featuring lakes, canyons, alpine meadows, and snow-capped peaks, and the others to reach a Buddhist sanctuary of Tibet, a sacred polygon formed by three holy lakes and three sacred mountains. The reserve is located 130 kilometers from Dao Xin Yading Airport. The new airport has increased the flow of sightseeing and pilgrimage tours to Tibet. The airport is equipped with a single runway. Its concrete surface, with a width of 45 meters and length of 4,200 meters, is designed to accommodate aircraft of 4C class, such as An-24, Eel-114, and Boeing 737. The Lukla Airport serves as the main gateway for those visiting Everest. Lukla Airport is considered one of the most dangerous in the world, if not the most dangerous. Its runway is only 527 meters long, with a 12-degree slope. The airport is situated high in the mountains, at an elevation of 2859 meters above sea level. The air is thin and under such conditions, engine thrust and wing lift decrease. All landings and takeoffs are executed by pilots in accordance with visual flight rules, as there is no equipment at the airport except for a radio station. Flights operate here only in good weather and during daylight hours. Often flights are canceled altogether and interruptions can last for weeks until the flying weather improves. Over the past 20 years, there have been seven plane crashes at this airport, resulting in more than 50 casualties. Write in the comments which of these airports impressed you the most. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Kara Show channel. Also, check out our previous videos. See you later.